Hello lovebirds, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to get into Soft Glam using drugstore only products. This is going to be a bit of a challenge for me because most of these products I haven't touched since high school. Now, I got a full range this morning from A to Z for primer to setting spray at my local drugstore for a little over a hundred euro. So if you're excited, then please stick around. Also, today's video contains a beautiful giveaway. And with beautiful, I mean big, exciting, amazing, and I cannot wait to make someone so incredibly happy with this gift. So let's get started. Um, My blouse is by this beautiful brand called Notes du Nord. Look at the sleeve detail. And then my earrings are by Regal Rose. Let's go. Now, one of those things that I'll never be stingy on is skincare. So I've already primed my face with a little bit of skincare. And the first product I'm going to try out is the Prime and Fine Paula's Blur Primer. Goodbye Pores by Catrice. Now, Primer for me is some somewhat more of a recent thing. I used to have quite pore-free skin, but as you get older, as you get over 30, then pores start to appear everywhere. So let's see if this really does the job. Oh, that's also quite mattifying. They also had one that was just mattifying. So I was figuring that this one might have been a little bit more radiant, but as you can see, it does do a fantastic job at disguising my pores onto foundation. Now, this product is actually the one product that I didn't rebuy for this video because it's actually one of my favorite foundations ever. The True Match Super Blendable Foundation by L'Oreal Paris and I use the color 2N, which is called Vanilla. It's funny because it's not always easy to get a dead on skin match, but watch as I go, because this is actually a dead on skin match for me. Do we see how invisible that is? <laughs> now, one of the beautiful things about this product is that I only need one full pump to get everything done. And I mean from chin to forehead, including my ears. Next up is a new try because I really love the e.l.f. Cosmetics Camo Concealer. But now recently they've released the hydrating camo concealer and I'm really excited to see how this will work out because the camo concealer is one of the most covering concealers that I've found so far and in a budget range this is absolutely amazing so let me see this is the color medium peach now most of you who watch my content know that I like to go in with a darker concealer shade to get rid of any of the blue undertones in my skin and then go in with a lighter shade to lift up certain areas and I go in with a beauty blender the only thing that I didn't skip on with um, drugstore is my tools I will stick to my tools no matter what as you can see I'm not a medium girl but medium peach does do the trick with cancelling any blues in my under eyes. Usually there are also some veins showing right around the outer corners of my mouth. So I go in with the darker shade of concealer right around that area as well. I'm gonna put a little dipper on the back of my hand because I might need a little bit more for spot concealing later on. First up, I'm gonna go in with the lighter shade, which is called Light Sand. I'm gonna use this to bring certain areas of my face forward. Now, it feels nice and fresh on the skin. It feels a little bit more liquid than the normal camo concealer. Now, as I'm looking at it so far, this is definitely going into a favorites box, because this is doing one heck of a nice job with me face. I've still got two little dollops of concealer on my hand to do some kind of spot concealing if necessary. I've got a little pimple on the center of my forehead, which I do want to eliminate. So I'm going in with the lighter shade because it's in the lighter triangle. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of concealer right on there. Hopefully eliminate that from sight. Now continuing to powder, I could not find a good translucent powder in my drugstore. It doesn't mean they aren't out there. It just means that I couldn't find something that was 
preferable for me. So I chose the Stay Matte Powders, Pressed Powders by Rimmel London. Now I chose two colours, the 003 Peach Glow and the 005 Silky Beige. Now I'm going to use the 003 for the centre of my face and then I'm going to use the other one for the outer perimeters. Just going to test it out on my under eyes first to see how well... Oh. See, the only thing I dislike about tinted powders is that sometimes they make the appearance of under eyes a little bit more visible again. So we just did all of the hard work to get this to look smooth. Sometimes a powder kind of eliminates that work. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Oh. I take back my words. This is actually really lovely. It is a bit more coverage than what I'm used to, but I like it. I'm not entirely sure if the 005 is going to be too dark for me or not, but let's give it a go. I'm gonna grab onto a larger brush. This is an amazing new addition to the Refer family, the number 22, and it is so beautiful and dense. Mm. I must admit, I am not disappointed so far. This is actually working out really well, especially if you're going to go for glam anyway. I'm all good with this. Now on to a category that makes me very, very critical. Now I am a critic when it comes to contour. It's one of those things that is difficult, it's been developing for so long, but I need something like an ash tone in my contour because of the paleness that is me. So now I found the Rimmel Sculpting Palette in 002 Coral Glow. And I thought that the contour shade actually looks really nice and a little bit ashy, which is difficult to find when you're talking about drugstore products. So I'm very curious to find out how this performs, especially since it does seem like it has some kind of a satin sheen. Not a big fan of that, but let's get to work and see how well it performs. Well, that isn't as ashy as I thought it was going to be, or what I was hoping it was going to be. But it suffices. I mean, there are loads of luxury products that don't do a good ashy contour either. So this is like, Slightly off, but not too far off to give it a no-go. Bad, not bad, not bad. Now, let's continue to the nasal area. See how well it performs there. I'm going to use a nice flat shade of brush. This is the 239S by MAC Cosmetics. Now, I'm hitting my first snag in this video, which is the satin is working against me. So if I turn to the side, at some point that contour is going to look like it's a highlighter. And this is exactly why I don't like any shimmers or any reflections in a contour shade. It needs to be full on matte. So this is going on the no-go list when it comes to the contour shade of this palette. What the rest is going to do, I still have to figure that out, but yeah, I might have to mattify it a little bit more just to make it work because you don't want shimmer in your contour. <laughs> That's just all I can say about this. You do not want shimmer in your contour. I've still got the brush that I used to do my under eyes with a little bit of powder. So I'm just going to see if I can blend it out a little bit and make it less satiny. Nah, not working. Okay, let's just continue to blush. So for blush, it's a whole different story. I don't mind a little bit of shimmer in my blush. Um, it can actually work out really, really nice. And this is a lovely peachy color. But there's no way you can determine how pigmented some of these powders are because I figured because the contour shade wasn't that pigmented, the blush wouldn't be so pigmented either. Not the case, it's quite pigmented. Not bad. But now I'm wishing I would have picked the Maybelline matte blushes. So you know what? I'm going to go for a different highlighter because I'm just not excited about the palette. I've never actually done this before where I've said, 
mm, don't really like it. Now, this was just very visually appealing in the makeup stand. Plus, it said matte bronzer. Now, this is just making me mad. When the cap was closed, it looked brand spanking new. Now that I'm opening it, someone put their finger in there. So I'm just gonna grab onto a little bit of spray alcohol. I'm just going to disinfect this baby, just in case. I'm not liking this process so far. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a gamble and use this thing. However, I will, Oh, that's a lot of product. Um, I will probably not be using it ever again, just because I don't want anything to happen to my skin or to my face. <laughs> and see if we can warm up this skin. Not entirely matte though. It does look really pretty. Essence, you have been approved. The drugstore, however, not approved. The next step is going to be either really fun or really bad. I'm also quite picky when it comes to brow products. I need them to be quite ashy because I am an ash blonde and I'm quite a dark ash blonde, so usually, the blonde pencils, they tend to be a little bit too orangey. Like there's a hint of auburn in there. So nine times out of 10, I go for pencils like the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in Granite, which is one of their darkest shades, but used lightly, it's a perfect match because it matches that ashy tone in my brows. So this one is going to be a little bit of a gamble. We've got the... L'Oréal Paris Skinny Definer Brow Artist. Now let's see how this compares to, for example, a Anastasia Beverly Hills. This side is Anastasia Beverly Hills in granite. And this side is the L'Oréal pencil. So I am really pleased because they seem to match up pretty well. So whenever I'm using a brow pencil, I like to start with the top part of my brow. So I want to map out my arch. Ah, this is where the major difference comes across. So the Anastasia Beverly Hills pencil is a little bit harder. So it's a little less creamy than this pencil is. Uh, and that makes it a little bit more difficult to work with, but not impossible. So the one thing you need to keep in mind with pencils like these that are a little bit more creamy is that you need to use a very, very light hand when applying your brow pencil. This is kind of what I mean. I'm not even feeling the pencil. So you need to be really careful, see? Not to put on too much pressure because that will leave your brows practically black. Decision. In terms of color, it is definitely a proof. But when you are using this pencil, I would recommend to really hold it at the end of the pencil so that you're not tempted to apply more pressure. So let's continue on to brow gel. This one is also by L'Oreal and it is called the Plump and Set Brow Artist. That is a very good, small, teeny tiny brush to do your brows with. Let's see how well they'll set. Because one thing I was very, very confused about. So on this part of the packaging, it says plump and set brow artist. But then on the cap of it, it says serum. So now I'm confused. Did I buy a serum or did I buy a brow gel or is it one of those two in one kind of things? The only thing now to do is to give it some time, see if it sets or not. So let's continue on to the eye area. One item I cannot go without, absolutely cannot go without, is a black gel eyeliner pencil. So I found this one, an 18 hour color and contour eye pencil in a gel form by Catrice. Now I think this was probably around $2.99. So if this works out, I'm gonna be extremely excited. For a black eye pencil, it's a little bit more to the gray area, if you know what I mean. It is really nice and precise though. So that's one of the things that I 
cannot complain about because it's quite difficult to find a really nice precise pencil. Now it does blend out like a dream. So for those of you who don't know, a cream pencil usually has a little sharpener in the end of the stick where you can just shape the tip of this little pencil into more of a pointy shape. I'm just going to see if this works out by darkening up that little crease line. So I like to draw it right on the edge of your brow bone. So that's quite above the crease. So now that I'm on the top part of this, it does seem to be setting. So that is great news. And I really, really like that it's this creamy because it makes it extremely blendable. I do want it to extend a bit more, so I'm gonna grab it with a little bit of an eyeliner brush by Charlotte Tilbury and fine tune that wing. All right, so I quickly matched the second eye to the first eye. Now, I have noticed that cleaning it up, it doesn't really fully set. So I'm going in with a new eyeshadow palette. So this was one of the most neutral eyeshadow palettes that I could find because I knew I wanted to do something glammy. So let's get into this and I'm going to be setting the um, eyeliner, well the core pencil, with that little sculpt shade. See it's really nice, beautiful, cool tones. It is more of a dark brown tone. Uh, it did not have a, oh, oh, that's quite pigmented. And I'm using the Refer number three. Now really exciting news. Refer is doing an update on their concept store. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Refer, they keep on developing new types of brushes and every time they want to test out a new shape, they put it in the concept store for 50% off. Now just hold on for October because there's going to be an amazing update to the concept store. I'm just going to tell you, they're going to put the core, core set into the concept store for 50% off, which is major because a lot of people have been asking them if they could do that. But it does mean that the company doesn't really make any revenue out of selling all of those sets. So it is really a give back to the community and I praise them for it because it is quite expensive to buy new brushes and especially brushes that are made in Japan, handmade. That's much more pigmented than I would have assumed when first looking at the eyeshadow palette. I'm going to go in with a lighter shade. Now, let's say we combine these two to get a little bit of a blending shade. I'm using a teeny tiny blending brush just to soften that up and to create a teeny tiny bit more shade. I will say I am quite pleased with the pigmentation of this palette. I did not expect to find a really nice neutral palette for around five euros that would do such a good job. All right, let's grab these two shades and also apply a little bit to the lower lash line. Now that we've got that in place, let's continue on Then with this light shade, I'm going to be applying a little bit of light to the brow bone. Now I do want a pop of excitement. So I've got this liquid glitter eyeshadow by Elf Cosmetics, and I'm going to be applying that to whichever is still empty. Right, I've got a nice little flat shader brush. Now I am hoping that this is quite opaque although I haven't tried it out before yet. So, okay. <laughs> I was hoping, but not expecting. Uh, this is wonderful. Elf, you've made my freaking day. It does remind me of my graphic eyeliner tutorial, um, but hello, it's the budget version. Who can be mad at that? All right, let's go on to the next step. So. 
Um, I chose two different mascaras, and in all honesty, I have no clue what the difference is. Now, I do like a bronzy packaging more than a pink one. They are both called Lash Paradise, so I'm not entirely sure what the difference is here. And the amount of plastic packaging for a drugstore mascara is just unnecessary, people. We can grab them out of the shelf. We don't need that much plastic. Okay, so the reason I chose this mascara is because of the way the brush looks. So, most of you know that my all-time favourite mascara is the YSL The Shop Mascara, which is also part of the L'Oreal group. Now, I figured if the L'Oreal group shares information with all of their brands, then chances are that I'm probably going to like this mascara if they are based on the same amount of knowledge that YSL, for example, uses. Now, still have to put that to the test, but I thought this would be a very good opportunity to test that out. Seems like I was right with my theory. That's a good first brush application. I do want a bit more. So one of the things that I love about the YSL The Shock is that it just gives this incredible punch of volume in one go. Now, with this one, a little less, but I do feel like for one layer, it is a very nice result. So probably with a few more layers, it should do the trick. Yep, there we go. See, it's coming, it's coming. So it promised volume, but also great length. L'Oreal knows how to make a mascara. And I think that my theory was absolutely right about the luxury brands and the drugstore brands sharing information on all of the research that they are doing. So if you can find a dupe for something, that's amazing, but definitely look in the same umbrella. Let's continue to highlight it. I've got this one by Revolution Pro. Yeah, Revolution. <gasps> <laughs> oh, kill me now. I am still curious to find out if it's a good highlighter. All right. See, at a distance, I think this would be wonderful. But close up. I kind of want to mix it with a liquid so that it doesn't sit on top of the skin that much. And it's very chunky, but I do love the colour. For someone as pale as I am, the pinky undertone is a great addition. It is a great complementary shade. So, let's see. For those of you who really like gleaming highlighters, this is wonderful. Uh, for me, it's a bit much. But that's also one of the lovely developments of the beauty industry is that pigmentation has gone up so much from when I was younger. I remember I had these cream eyeshadows and all they would do was get a hint and a sheen onto the eyelid, but nothing more. Very complimentary, but it, it wasn't much. So yeah. Makeup products have definitely developed over the past few years. Do you see what happens? Every time I blend it into the skin, that kind of chunkiness does disappear somewhat. So I do feel like it's a success. Now I'm gonna go clean my pants before this gets worse. <laughs> It's time to finish up this makeup. So I've got a lip pencil and a lipstick in a somewhat darker nude tone because the lighter nude tones, they seemed a bit too light. So let's unpack these. Again, the plastic. On the one hand, I'm happy it's plastic because then there's no boo-boos like with the Essence bronzer. Um, but on the other hand, it's so much. Okay, so for the lip pencil, it's called 
Color Sensational Lip Liner in the color 630 Velvet Beige. That's not bad. It's actually quite close to my natural lip tone. So that is great because I do love a nude moment. As you guys know, I love doing the eyes quite dramatically and then topping it off with a nude lipstick just to enhance the lip shape. So this is a good one for me. Um, then I've got, ooh, that seems dark. I was not expecting that. I've got the 373 Mauve for me. So mm, I'm probably going to keep this in a very light layer. <laughs> because I was actually thinking that this is going to be a little bit more nude than this shade, but it is a good shade. It's a really nice complimentary shade. It does feel incredibly comfortable on the lips. It's growing on me. Now I am going to cheat a teeny tiny bit because I don't like the sheen on the top part of the lip line. So I'm going in with a little bit of the RCMA No Color Powder. Now, I don't feel it's like massive cheating since it's only $11 or 11 pounds, I don't remember, but it's cheap. So I'm feeling like I'm allowed to do this. It's just so that the top line of the lip, especially if you decide to overline the cupid's bow a tiny bit, because for me, it oftentimes feels a little bit too much like a rooftop. So I kind of connect them. But then if it has a little bit of shine or sheen, it does look very unnatural. So a little bit of translucent powder right on that area does help you create a beautiful visual lip. Now for my last product in this entire routine, I'm going in with the long lasting Prime and Fine, yeah, Prime and Fine, multi-talent fixing spray. And you can use it to prepare the skin, improve makeup wear, and it refreshes the complexion. So I could have used this in the beginning of this whole makeup routine, but I didn't exactly read all of the descriptions on the packaging before I got started. Oh, it's very fragrant, very sweet. What does it smell like? Ah, shit, there's alcohol in it. I don't particularly like that. I like my setting sprays to be hydrating, um, but it still doesn't mention anything about the fragrance. Ah, oh, well, fuck it. I do enjoy the mister. That's a good mister, it has a really even flow. So for example, with products like Max Fi Mac Fix Plus, that sometimes gives you these little squirts of concentrated setting spray, not always good. So if that happens, you need to just clean the, the nozzle on the setting spray. Um, but this gives a really nice, big and large distribution of setting spray. So it should help me create a long lasting makeup. As always, I have kind of avoided the T-zone of the face. So let this try. Well, there you have it, loves. The end result of my drugstore only makeup challenge. Now I will say 90 to 95 of the products that I've used today were positive experiences. Um, the only product that I actually really disliked was the Rimmel Contour Palette because, and just because of the fact that the contour shade was satiny. And that is something that really can make or break a contour is if you can see it sitting on the skin or creating a reflection, those are two things that you really want to avoid when it comes to contour. So this is probably the only product that I've really disliked. Now, the second bad experience was the fact that this palette or this bronzer was actually already touched before I opened it for the first time. So that is something that you wouldn't really encounter with luxury products. Um, and then the third downfall was the Revolution highlighter. Now, I will say it's probably had a rough travel I did like the color. I didn't like the fact that it was a little bit crunchy, but then if I look at it now, it gives a really beautiful highlight. So I might have to repurchase this just to see if this could be a winner or not. 
Now, it is time to get to the exciting part. Where is it? There it is. So recently I've been in contact with the two lovely owners of Depixum, and that is a brand from the UK. They created a product called Cosmetic Emulsion, which is cosmetic paint in probably every shade that you can imagine. And I really wanted to do a tiny giveaway with maybe have a winner choose five colors of choice. Well, they counted. They came back and they said, well, we've got a better idea. We've been working on a little concept for our cosmetic emulsions. So for this giveaway, I am able to not just give you five shades, but gift you the entire collection in this extremely lovely case. So let me open her up. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. So you can probably already tell there's quite a lot of product in here. So if we fold away the little sheet paper. These are the Cosmetic Emulsions by Depixum and it's not 10 shades, but 20. And the beauty of this product is, is that you can mix each and every shade to create custom shades and you can apply it to every part of the face that you want. So lips, blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner, anything you want to do with this, you can actually do that. So I'm going to describe in the description box what you have to do to be able to win this extremely beautiful gift and I really hope we can make someone really really happy and expand that creativity so if you want to enter the giveaway then please check the description box so guys that was it thank you so so much for watching and I really hope to see you next time bye